This is a result of him going to outer space, meeting his creators. What's up, Rage Nation? How's it going? This is Alex, you and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is just web series we're talking about Transformers last night, this episode number 104. And I want to first start off by saying happy birthday to Eduardo De La O, Reggie Isaman, Sonny Lopez, Blasty, Kylie Jane, Julian Moreno, and The Games. Happy birthday to all y'all. Hope you have a good one. Thank you for being part of the Rage Nation. The next thing I want to say is that this is the countdown to Super Bowl. There are 25 days left. 25 days until the next big piece of marketing for Transformers last night. 30 seconds of all new footage is going to be really, really exciting because you know Michael Bay always delivers when it comes to a Super Bowl TV spot. He always blows us away. After all, you remember my reaction from the Grimlock reveal in the Transformers Age of Extinction Super Bowl TV spot. I absolutely lost it. So I don't know what he's going to show us in the Transformers last night Super Bowl TV spot, but I do know whatever it is, I'm probably going to lose it again and it's going to blow our minds because 30 seconds is not a whole lot of time. So the whole idea is to put in enough stuff in there that just really captures your attention. And I know he will. So there's 25 more days left. Super Bowl is on February 5th, Sunday. So stay tuned. Anyways, let's talk about Toys! What we're going to talk about in this episode is all about the toys. And for the toys, we've only really seen the images for the new Premier Edition, Transformers Last Night, Voyager Class, Optimus Prime, and also from Takara, the 10th anniversary of the movie line, which isn't exactly related to Transformers Last Night, but still, it is still something related to the movie. But now we have some new information, and it is from Amazon. Amazon has listed a list <laughs> of Transformers Last Night toys. And when they list such things so early, before the actual toy release in May, it might make you question the validity of it. After all, it is a leaked list. And instead of putting the actual names of the characters that are being released in the toy line, they got placeholder names. Now, this isn't anything new. For the leaked list of the Transformers Age of Extinction toys, they actually used placeholder names in the form of Rocky characters. And by Rocky, I mean the Mo Rocky film franchise, such as Club Clubber, Ivan, Thunderlips, <laughs> Apollo. So, yeah, it's not entirely related to the the, the characters per se, or even at all, but um, it's just a placeholder name. So, uh, TFW2005.com has got you covered. It listed all the the uh, items in all the different waves and in all the different classes. So, for example, there's the Generations Deluxe Class, Voyager Class, and Legion Class, and there are three waves for each except for the Legion Class that has two. And the only thing we do know is how many different characters there are going to be in each wave and in each class. So here are the names. They don't really mean anything. They're placeholder names. Shooting Star, Gamma Ray, Mars, Gas Giant, Nova, Comet, Earth, Hot Gas, Zodiac, Gravity, Saturn, and Lightning. What does all that mean? They decided to use placeholder names that have to do with things in outer space. Perhaps, um, you know, protoforms, more protoforms are coming from outer space. I don't know. To be completely honest, I don't think they mean anything at all. I think they're just using a theme and then just using names uh, or terms to be placeholders. But it won't really mean anything at all. At least that's what I think. I don't think they're, that you need to overthink any of these names. They're just placeholder names. And they need to do that because, you know, knowing right away what the real names are is kind of spoilerish. So I think that... You know, right now, it doesn't mean anything. We're going to find out later on. Now, so that's a little bit of unofficial, official information. But it's about time that we saw some official information in the form of photos. In Hong Kong, what's taking place right now is the Hong Kong Toys and Games Convention. 
and Victor Wong was over there and he took some photos of two new items from the Transformers movie line, specifically Transformers Last Night and also the original Transformers film in, from 2007. Let's start off by talking about that item and that is the third figure in the movie masterpiece line. You know the movie masterpiece line? They came up with uh, Bumblebee for the first one and then Starscream. The third one is Bumblebee again. I'm a little bit disappointed for a line that I really wanted to continue collecting. They decided to rehash, reissue, reissue or re-release an already existing figure. Now, I am i don't know if it's the same or exact same mold, but all I do know is just from looking at the photos, all the dark gray parts that were, that made up his, you know, his, his uh, endoskeleton, you know, out, uh, in, from the inside of the, uh, the car parts, the yellow car parts, all those dark gray parts are now black with silver weathering or metallic weathering. That's all I can notice from face value. Just by looking at this, that's all I can see. It's the original Camaro and all the dark gray parts are now black with metallic weathering. That's all I can see from just looking at this image, this photo. And there's an official image from, uh, from Takara. And check this out. It's the MPM3 and it's the Bumblebee and this is what he looks like. So it really just looks like a weathered version of the um, of the original masterpiece movie Bumblebee. So I'm a little bit disappointed, but for those who missed out on the original Bumblebee or the original release of the masterpiece movie Bumblebee, here is your chance to pick it up. Heck, I might even look at the, the new one and I might replace the one that I already have if I really, really like the weathering. So that's the, that's the current, uh, um, that's the new line in the, in the movie line. That's the new item in the movie line. But what we got to talk about is a new leader class Optimus Prime. Now this is very, very um, unique actually. Well, not totally unique, uh, but uh, it is still new, unique in its own way. So this is the premier edition leader class Shadow Spark Optimus Prime from Transformers Last Night and it's an Asia exclusive. Check out these images or these photos from Victor Wong and here's the box, the back of the box, uh, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, here is the top of the box, you see Bumblebee, Optimus Prime and a new image of Drift in his robot mode. He's red, he's got a sword. And now here is Optimus Prime, Shadow Spark Optimus Prime rather, on display. Here's the, the front of the box and it looks pretty cool. You don't see a whole lot of the toy and it looks like it flips out. I mean, it's a flap out box, I think. I can't be entirely sure, but it kind of looks like that. Uh, I guess you flip it out uh, so that you can see the insides. Um, and then just based on what we see here, this is really the same mold as um, the Armor Knight Optimus Prime. You know, the Takara Ar Armor Knight Optimus Prime? Um, that was pretty cool. I really like that. I have that. And I, I think that that is the best version of the Leader Class Optimus Prime from Transformers Age of Extinction. This looks like the exact same mode. As a matter of fact, I really think that it is. But it's just weathered. It, it's completely weathered. And it looks very, very dark. And it feels like this is the movie's take on Nemesis Prime. Because, you know, with every original red and blue Optimus Prime, there's always got to be a black version or a nemesis version of that, that Prime. So this is the movie, the live action movie's answer to that. And instead of Armor Knight Optimus Prime, we now have Shadow Spark Optimus Prime. It says right here on the, on the uh, label, it's an Asia exclusive Shadow Spark Optimus Prime. And there are actually even official photos. Now here's the official photo of the box. Looks pretty nice. I really like the box art, but the it's really, really weathered. I mean, it's really, really weathered and really, really dull. And here's what it looks like in his uh, robot mode. It looks really, really beaten up, really scratched up. Uh, a lot has happened to him. And he looks even worse in his vehicle mode. <laughs> I mean, in the vehicle mode, it's, it really shows you its true colors. And that is, it's just this really dark bluish gray. 
and there isn't a whole lot of paintwork to it. It's just uh, some rust, cosmic rust, if you will, dark blue, and just a lot of paint wear. And that's it. That's all it really is. And that is Shadow Spark Optimus Prime. And it's essentially a beat up, uh, a, a ver darker version of the Armor Knight Optimus Prime. I mean, if you have to ask me, I love my Armor Knight Optimus Prime. As for this, it's something that uh, I don't really care that much about. But uh, we'll see. Um, hey, actually, you know what? Um, is, that the is that just Leader Class or the Armor Knight? Uh, you know what? Let's confirm that and take a look right now. Let's not. It's somewhere in the... the, the <laughs> it might be hard to pull out, but uh, let's find out. Let's see if I can see that. Nope, that's not it right there. Forget about it. Okay, so I'm not doing that. Uh, yeah, so anyways, that's the, um, the Asia exclusive Shadow Spark Optimus Prime. It's the premier edition. Now let's take a look at what it says on the back because you know usually on the back of the box they have some sort of description for the character. Okay, so here we go. It says here, Optimus Prime leaves Earth to stand against the creators in defense of our planet. He finds unexpected dangers in the bleakness of outer space, including a new threat with the power to destroy us all. Now, a lot of people can interpret it, th interpret that in many ways. I mean, some would say Unicron, some would say Quintessa, Quintessons, the creators. I mean, when you really think about it, it's a very, very generic and vague and very, very general type of description that really doesn't tell us anything. Some people could think that, oh my god, I really think that it's Unicron. I mean, you know, a danger that can destroy us all. But when you really look back at all the, you know, all the, the I guess, descriptions or plot synopsis or premises of the previous last three sequels, they all say the same thing. Oh, a new threat from outer space or Cybertron or from the galaxy has Earth in its crosshairs. That was, I think, Age of Extinction. Or a new threat from the whatever, whatever, set, you know, set its eyes on Earth and who knows what's going to happen. You know, this is something very generic and vague and it really doesn't tell us anything. All we know is that there's a new threat. And also we know is that Optimus Prime did end up meeting his creators and he learned something new. There's new information and he, um, you know, he, um, he ended up uh, uh, becoming this. This is a result of him going to outer space, meeting his creators. And he might have gotten into a big fight. He might have gotten beaten up or something like that. But um, after trying to meet the creators, this is the result of that, ev that, that meeting. So that's all I can gather from that. So it was a very, very dangerous trip, which almost cost his life. But we all know what happens. Not entirely, but we do know that Optimus Prime goes evil. So there you have it. That's all I got to say in this episode. I'm still iffy on the, the, the Shadow Spark Optimus Prime. Shadow Spark Optimus Prime is not necessarily what they're going to call an evil version of Optimus Prime. Um, they might even mention Nemesis Prime or even just Nemesis, his arch nemesis in dialogue. But, I, but Shadow Spark... I'm pretty sure is something like um, Silver Knight Optimus Prime. They never actually mentioned Silver Knight Optimus Prime. They never mentioned the term Silver Knight. They never meant. I'm pretty sure they're not even going to mention Shadow Spark. I think it's just something for the toy. So it's not something that we have to get too excited about, or we don't have to to look into it to in too much detail because like there's also Armor Knight Optimus Prime and Black Knight Grimlock but none of that actually exists in the actual movie you know what I'm saying so Shadow Spark Optimus Prime the Shadow Spark is probably just something that is for um for merchandising that's all it really is it's just merchandising so we don't have to look into it too much but anyways I don't know if I want to get it until I see the thing in person as for the masterpiece Bumblebee if the weathering looks better than the original version, I might end up getting that one. But anyways, that's all I got to say in this episode. In the next episode, you're going to want to stay tuned for that.
episode number 105 because we're going to talk about this image. This is a new official image. Very, very curious. I'm not going to say much more than that. You're going to have to wait till the next episode. Anyways, the last thing I want to do is give shout outs. I want to say thank you to every single one of you guys who has subscribed to the A3U Review. You know the A3U Review. It is a web series where I and Boris from ages3andup.com talk about Transformers, third party Transformers, and we do reviews, we do comparisons, we do spotlight videos, and we also do some collaborations with other YouTubers from the Transformers community. And I want to say thank you to every single one of you guys who watch us because we have just reached 8,000 subscribers and we're so happy about that. So thank you so much for all your support. If you are not subscribed to the A3 Review, please head over there right now, youtube.com slash A3 Review and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. Next thing I want to do is give a shout out to the wet movement. Check this out. Check out this t-shirt. This t-shirt was brought to you by the wet movement. Wetmovement.com, I believe. Uh, let me just double check that. Well, yes, wetmovement.com. They also got a Facebook page and you should go check them out because this is uh, the shirt that they um, provided for me and this is a representation of pop culture and uh, art in t-shirts. And here, what we have here is the Rogue Edition, and that is, well, I, I call it the Rogue Edition, um, but uh, what it is is actually, if you look closely in the word wet, you actually see Stormtroopers there. So it's very, very cool, and it is uh, from two really, really cool guys, uh, Gerald and Zach, and uh, check this out, Northwest Finest, it says right there. So very, very cool, uh, I want to say congratulations to Zach and Gerald on your, um, on your, um, your venture, and you guys got to go check them out. Uh, they got a lot of great merchandise and more great merchandise coming your way. So wetmovement.com, like them on Facebook and show some support. The next thing I want to say is I want to give shout outs to people who have said some really, really nice and kind words of support for Bram. Uh, you remember Bram? I mentioned him in the previous episode. He's a young five-year-old boy who's a huge Transformers fan, but unfortunately he's going through some um, respiratory complication and has to go through surgery, and he could really use your support, and a lot of you guys came through, and I want to give a shout-out to those that uh, um, said some really kind words uh, to Bram. Baconator 9000, CDC Hunter, Ultimate Fire 54, Spidey Renneker, um, uh, Adam Bozek, LA Motion Picks, Alicia Ross, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot, and Cooper Grubbs. I really appreciate you guys for showing your kindness and your warmth uh, because at a time like this, you know, people like um, and, and wonderful people like Bram and his family really need your support. So thank you so much for your kind words. It really brought a smile to the faces. All right. And to Bram, uh, we're thinking of you. All right, so, so hang in there, buddy. Stay strong. We're going to fight through this together. All right, and I also want to say thank you to everybody who has voted for Ryan's 1977 Camaro Beater Bee for the, uh, the contest for the 2017 uh, International Auto Show. Thank you to you guys. He's currently in the lead. But the, 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 the contest is not over. There are still five more days left and he needs to stay in the lead. And there is another vehicle that is right behind him. So it is a 1977 Pontiac Trans Am Bandit and it's got 2,600 votes. The Chevrolet Camaro from Ryan's got 2,700 votes. We need more. You guys got to head over to the link, which I'm going to provide in the description box below. Click vote. And the reason why you need to do this is because Ryan is a representative of the Transformers community. And if you guys help him out, at the end of all this, if he wins, we win. You know what I'm saying? If he wins, we win. And it's a representation of the fandom coming together. So that's why you guys got to go out there and vote and make sure that he wins. Go do your job. Rage and Nation. Show him some support. And we're going to help each other. And final last thing I want to do is Twitter shoutouts. So if you retweeted my last video, I would give you random shoutouts. So Heroic Static, uh, Superboy Cat123, Christopher Bailey, 
uh, block game frustration, Ron Days, Shamari Farrell, and Yusuf Andika. Thank you so much for retweeting my video. I really appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for watching my videos. Anyway, stay tuned for the next episode, episode number 105, where we're going to talk about this image. And then, yeah, that's it. <laughs> As always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation, and um, uh, I'm at a loss for words. Follow me on Instagram at The Raging Nation. I'll see you next time. Peace. For atmosphere. Like I said before, the very first time was in, in the live action universe was Transformers Dark of the Moon. I'm just thinking that